tonight we're dedicating our meditation to the King of Thailand, who passed away last night. It's hard to describe to people who haven't lived in Thailand exactly what a great king he was. All that he'd done for Thailand. When he first became king, he didn't have any power. The kingship was just a... at that point was kind of an empty position. And he turned it into something really good. He saw all the different ways that in his position he could create goodness for Thailand. Finding ways to help people who were poor, encouraging the practice of the religion, trying to ensure that Thais would have water to use and water to drink. Even the rain out of the sky, he had, had an artificial rain program that was became a standard for the rest of the, low, the rest of the world. And all the various royal projects to help people in all walks of life. It's hard to imagine one person doing all that he did, but he did. And so when someone like this passes, there's, there's a great sense of loss. But there's also a sense that he, of inspiration. He, can show us what, he showed what a human being can do. Very few people with his potential for power and influence use their power and influence so well. Those of us who don't have much power or influence in the world, we can think about, well, if we did, if we had that kind of power and influence, we'd want to do it, could do good in this way and do good, good in that way. But when people get in that position, all too often they're tempted to go off in other directions. So it's inspiring to see someone who wasn't waylaid, who actually gave his life for his country. He could have lived in the palace, he could have lived in comfort, but he didn't. He went out into the jungles, went out into the forest, went out into the rice fields all over the country, trying to find out why poor people were so poor and what could be done to help them. He instituted lots of projects that the, the government at the time had no idea of how to do, and he was able to do it. In terms of the religion, he encouraged people to practice. He himself was a supporter of the forest tradition. So it was a very good example. And when you think about good people who have lived in the world, that's not, we don't just think about them. The right way to respond to that is say, what, what kind of goodness can still be carried on? Perhaps we can carry that kind of goodness on, or whatever kind of goodness is appropriate for our station. When Sarabhuta passed away, Ananda was the first to get the news, and so he went to see the Buddha to give the Buddha the news. And then he said that he was he felt, as he said, all directions were, were dark. The Dharma was no longer clear to him. He was so upset by, and so shocked by Sariputta's passing away. And the Buddha said, well, did Sariputta take virtue with him? Did he take concentration with him when he died? Did he take discernment? Did he take release? No. Those things are still there. You have the opportunity to build them. You have the opportunity to develop them. So it's good to think about people who are inspiring, to realize that this is what human beings are capable of. You're a human being. Maybe you can be capable of something good along those lines as well. And this is how the goodness of the people in the past have, who provided us with the opportunities that we have gets carried on. In Buddhism, there's a strong sense that when we're born into this world, we're born with a we're born into debt. There's so many people we owe things to. The fact that we have language, the fact that we have all the conveniences, with all the opportunity to practice what's good, to practice the Dharma, we owe this to people who have come before us. And the way to repay the debt is to make sure that that goodness doesn't die with us, that we find ways of carrying it on. So we're meditating right here, right now. We've got the opportunity to 
develop some goodness in our mind. You think about the Buddha, you think of all the, the Ajahns, all the people who have passed this teaching down to us. They didn't let it stop with them. They made sure that there was something left, there was something carried on, something conveyed to the next generation. This has been going on for many, many generations now. And so here we are, recipients of their goodness, which means we're in debt to them. And the way to repay the debt is to pass the goodness along. The best way to pass it along is not just simply to tell other people about it, but actually to practice it. So it's not just words, but it's the presence of a good person, the example of a good person for other people to see. So even though we're living here in America, we're, we're recipients of the King's goodness as well. The support they gave from the, the forest tradition enabled Mat Meta to get started. The fact that Thailand didn't become communist, and Buddhism wasn't wiped out the way it was in other countries around it, owes an awful lot to the king. So here we are. This is, we're sitting here in a large piece of his goodness right now. He was the person who kept the country together, that enabled the, the Ajahns to continue practicing, and all the other people wanted to practice, to continue practicing, enabled those from outside the country to come and practice, and to bring the Dharma back. So we're in the King's debt. So we dedicate the merit of our practice to him, and we determine that the way to repay that debt is to make sure that this practice continues. As we bring our minds into concentration, as we try to develop discernment and overcome our defilements. That's what goodness is kept alive in the world. We're all here for a very brief time. As the Buddha says, even if you live to a hundred years, it's, it's still pretty short. Think about it. When the end comes, even if you've been around for a hundred years, you look back on your life and it seems very, very short. So try to be heedful. You've got the opportunity now. And in the case of the, the king's passing, there was, there was no sign ahead of time. I mean, there were the signs of aging, illness, and death, but there was no specific sign that was going to be on this day or that day. You look in your own body, the signs of aging and illness may be more or less than other people's. But everybody reaches the same end at some point. And things we don't know what the day is going to be. But we do have right now, this breath right here, right here. So make the most of it. As I said, this is how goodness is kept alive in the world. Through our heedfulness and our sense of gratitude to those who went before.